Start by cutting out a piece of paperboard according to those measurements and then try a layout of your kitchen onto that paperboard. The rectangle in the center will be visible because I won't put any cabinets in that area, which is why I'm going to cover it with marble contact paper. Now cut several strips of foam board, which should be about 6 cm wide, and cut them to fit onto the lines of your layout. This long rectangle is going to be the fridge, and here you see me dividing it into sections for the shelves using a set square, so that everything is straight and even. Make sure that all the lines are at the same height, including the little piece that is dividing the lower part of the fridge in half. Now cut small popsicle sticks to fit onto the black foam board and glue them down, always two at a time, leaving just enough space between them to fit in another one like this. When you're done, paint the inside of the fridge white. I had to add a second and a third layer to get full coverage. Don't forget to paint the back of the fridge as well and I even added some paint to the rest of the paperboard to make everything look tidy. Prepare the left side of the fridge for the hinges by making tiny cuts to get two small gaps. Now apply a clear drying glue like Mod Podge to every part that is not white and cover it in blue paper or any other color. Also apply Mod Podge on top of the paper if you want your kitchen to be glossy and repeat the steps for the rest of the walls. Don't forget to prepare gaps for the hinges on every wall that is meant to hold a cabinet door and now start gluing everything down using hot glue. Here you can see me applying more white paint to the areas that got damaged or that weren't covered properly to begin with and now cut out all the cabinet doors. Cover the fridge door with blue paper on the outside and white paper on the inside. Apply Mod Podge or any other clear drying glue that is also a sealer at the same time to make the door shiny. And now cut lollipop sticks into small pieces and slide them onto cut up paper clips to make hinges. Poke two holes in each of the gaps that you prepared earlier and push the hinges through. Apply strong glue on both of them and place the door on top. Wait for it to dry before you open it and apply more glue. Now repeat the steps to attach the rest of the cabinet door. make a box out of foam board pieces, cover the inside with paper before gluing all the pieces together. Cover small pieces of paperboard in paper and glue them in place to separate the box into sections. Cover the front piece in blue paper, the inside in white paper. Seal it, apply hot glue, place the drawer halfway into the shelf and push it in when attaching the blue front piece. Make three bigger drawers and place them in their shelves.
Now cut four pieces of clear plastic from toy packaging that fit into the fridge. Cut two popsicle sticks to fit on each side. Paint them white and attach them to the sheet of clear plastic using clear drying glue. You will need four of them to make shelves for the fridge. Empty and clean a small jam container, cut it to fit into the lower part of the fridge. Use five more of them to make see-through storage boxes. Now it's time to make the oven. First I'm going to change the original layout in order to make it easier to attach the doors. I'm going to cut off two strips that are one centimeter wide from the big blue door and place one of them on the other side next to the oven. That's it, that's all I wanted to change. Now take a pin and push it very carefully into the foam board instead of making hinges. Push it all the way through so that you don't see the little head. Do the same with the oven door, making sure that there's enough space for the door to move around. Now attach those two pieces to each other by pushing another pin into the foam board just beneath the oven door. Paint everything that's going to be inside the oven black before gluing the slim foam board pieces to the kitchen frame. Remove the drawers to make it easier to push in the last pin. Now you can open and shut the doors and remember to leave a small gap between the oven and the foam board underneath it. Apply a shiny finish to the oven, don't forget the inside and place a sheet of clear plastic inside the oven before it dries. For the next step you will need split pins, poke 5 of them into the foam board and use a marker to draw little dots on them to make them look like little buttons. Glue two tiny pieces of foam board above the oven window, paint a cocktail stick black and glue it on top. Glue several pieces of foam board on the inside of the door next to the oven to make a bin. Leave some space right here because the sink will go on top. Now paint some toothpicks and wooden cocktail sticks gold for the baking tray. Poke them through the wall between the bin area and the oven and glue the toothpicks on top. For the kitchen counter you will need two pieces of foam board that are 25 cm long and 6 cm wide. Trace the shape of a small white container on one of them and cut it out inside the line so that the opening is slightly smaller than the container. Cut the same hole into the other foam board, place the sink in one of them, cover the other one in marble contact paper and then glue them together. Before gluing it in place, check whether there is enough space between the bin and the kitchen sink so that you're still able to open and shut the cabinet door. Insert a wire into a lollipop stick, bend it and spray paint it along with two pinboard tags to make a tap. Make a stove by gluing toothpicks to a rectangle piece of paperboard, paint it black and place two thumbnail tags on each side. Use a marker to draw tiny dots around the edges of the thumbnail tags. I'm using this box for the kitchen aisle since it has a built-in drawer which means I don't have to make one. Glue foam board around the box to give it height and stability. Remove the drawer, cover the top with marble contact paper, add one more sheet of foam board and cover the sides with blue paper. Put the trowel back in and glue foam board that matches the rest of the kitchen to the front. Now cut out a piece of foam board that is about 4cm wider than the top of the kitchen aisle and evenly apply a drop of hot glue to it. 
You want this drop to look nice since it will be visible. Place a wooden stick of the same height as the kitchen aisle in the center of the drop and hold it until it can stand up by itself. Repeat the steps for the corners next to it and connect those wooden sticks with a longer stick. Now carefully remove it from the tabletop. It's a bit tricky for me because I didn't put baking paper on top of the foam board to avoid the glue sticking to it. But for the next step I'm going to place the wooden sticks on paper that hot glue doesn't stick to and it makes everything a lot easier. Apply a generous amount of hot glue to the corners of the framework and once it is completely dry you can easily remove it and tidy up the corners with scissors and a cutter. When you're happy with the results, spray paint everything gold. Cover the tabletop in marble contact paper and attach the table legs. I'm going to make a very tiny leg that is going to connect the kitchen aisle and the tabletop. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow Fun and Craft on Instagram. Bye bye!